Hi everyone, it's Karen here and welcome back to my channel. I'm really excited because I just got uh, my alcohol pearls in the mail and I wanted to use them right away in a video. I also got this Joggles Disbound Art Journal, but this is Yupo paper and it's all to be bound with these discs that are right here. I didn't bind it yet because I want to use it for the alcohol pearls. And I, there was no point on binding it before I'm using it. But at the end, I will show you how I'm going to bind it. It's one of this is a white Yupo paper. And I'm going to be working on my glass mat. But I actually also put a piece of packaging on top. That way, it protects my mat. And actually, it's much easier to use. Then I can throw this out. And it has like an indent in it. So it's really easy. Now, you can see the reflection of my camera. But don't worry about that. That will be covered once I put the papers. I want to show you a few techniques with the alcohol pearls, but of course these techniques are not new. They're the same techniques that you can use with alcohol inks. And you can definitely combine the alcohol pearls with the alcohol inks the same way. So you can use them separately or together. You can use the mixatives. There's lots of different ways that you can use it. So I just want to get started on my first technique. And that's basically just really easy is just basically doing drips and drops on the paper. So this is one of my favorite techniques and I don't do much to it. I just let things drop on the paper. And then I start combining the colors. Now, the nice thing about the alcohol pearls is that they're pearlized, but the important thing is to make sure that you shake them really well because that way you'll get that really nice pearl effect. There is the pearlized thing at the bottom of it when it settles, but you need to mix it really well for it to work. And they mix really, really nicely together. I love the effects. I love making backgrounds with alcohol inks. And this is basically a very simple way of doing it. You don't have to uh, do much to it. Let's see, let's add some of this one. Not sure what color sometimes I don't even know what colors they are going to be oh, well. this is like an olive green and let's add a little bit of yellow so you see it's really easy and it creates beautiful effects so I'm just gonna let this settle down you can also lift it up and obviously move the color a little bit But I like keeping it in this way. I'm just going to go back with the purple a little bit. And just fill in the spots. I want to fill in everything. I mean, you don't have to, but I love filling in the areas. Because I like having full backgrounds. So you could use all, all these techniques. You can use either for art journaling or for, or for card backgrounds. Basically, anything goes. You don't have to... Just make backgrounds with it. You could use it for any type of project. And it, wow, it's so beautiful. The pearls are stunning. So this is the first technique and it's basically just applying it this way. And I'm going to put this aside and let this dry. For the second one, I'm going to splatter a little bit of the alcohol blending solution in the background. And then I'm going to splatter the effect. So you could just use the solution the way like this, just to splatter things around. But I want to show you the technique that I want to do with this. So once I put a bunch of drops on, I'm going to use a heat tool to kind of move the, it around. Now you can definitely add more as you go, but what the heat tool does is that it actually moves and creates waves in the background. So it does the work for you. So for example, I'm going to add a little bit more just to show you. Thank you. 
so it creates really really cool effects and I really like doing it with the heat tool because it creates these beautiful waves so I'm going to put this one to dry I mean it's almost fully dry but I want to put it on the side so, so you can see the next technique for the next one I am going to use the solution again so I'm going to put it in the back and then again I'm going to put some alcohol's pearls on it and then what I'm going to use is a straw to blow it away and it creates beautiful effects as well you can turn it around So it creates similar effects to the blow dryer, but you can do it with a straw as well. And you're not heat setting it, you're just letting it dry naturally on the side. So there we go. That's another really cool technique that you can do with it. And I love doing it as well. Now I want to show you the first one. It didn't actually come out as little dots. I thought it was going to. I think the reason why is because it all blended but you can really see the really pearlized look to it. So it's really, really nice. I love these backgrounds already and I love having fun with these techniques. I think to get the dots on it, I might have to like heat set in between to get little dots on it. Let me try again. So I'm going to create dots in different areas. And then I'm going to put other colors but not connect them yet until until it and it dries a little bit I want to try it that way that way maybe it will create the dotted background that I want to create oops that was blocked that was not good okay never mind about that that was unexpected I think also it helps to add a little bit of the solution. I find the solution kind of makes things go smoother. Let's see, oh, let me put this blue one. So what I'm going to do, besides this really big blob of green that I did not intend to have in here, I'm going to let this dry for a second and then I'm going to come back to it and add more that way I think I'm going to get that background that I was looking for in the meantime I'm going to go with my next technique and that is to use two papers and kind of smush things together so there's two ways of doing that I'll show you both ways so let's pick two colors again i'll pick let's say yellow and this bronze color so what i'm thinking is i'm going to add solution and then i'm going to add everything to this one over here maybe some of this color as well okay and then all you have to do is just basically smush this one into it and you get really cool effects yes you do you kind of get a butterfly effect the other way to do this is by using an acrylic block you could do this as well by let's say you put some over here on top and maybe some red and then all you have to do is just smush it onto the background so I could do this and then you can just use some alcohol to remove the excess so you can add little almost like stamping it you can add effect and texture to the alcohol inks as well that's really neat so I like that so smushing is another way of doing this and I'm going to put these two backgrounds aside, although I do, I like, as I said, I like filling in the background. So I'm going to get areas here where I missed. I'm going to put some color. Okay, there we go. Okay, now let's put these aside. 
and I want to show you, I'm going to go back to the other one. I think it already dried a little bit. The nice thing about alcohol inks is that they dry really, really quickly. And I'm going to go back to this one. Now you can see that it's a little bit, it's a little bit better in terms of the colors and the way they split up. So you could go on top and add a color and it will create that really nice circular effect that I wanted. So going on top creates those circles, which is what I was trying to achieve, but it wasn't working really well the first time around. So you need to dry the first layer before adding another layer. And that creates a really cool effect in the background. So let me just add some yellow here. There we go. And some blue. There we go. And you can even go more, another dot in the center. So that works well. So when you have, I want to try that actually. I want to try to do one dot over another dot. Almost like a pouring. Okay. So you can just continue playing. I mean, my favorite thing is to make backgrounds. I love making backgrounds with the alcohol inks, but truthfully, you can do anything you want with them, right? People do beautiful paintings with them. So you can make little circles, you can make bigger circles. I mean, possibilities are endless. So there we go. So this kind of looks a little bit different than what I was trying to do in the original one. So there we go. I'm going to let this dry. I might even come back to it again. We'll see depending on if I want to add more circles or not. Now, going back to the next technique, and this one I'm going to use this felt tip. And you can have it, I think it comes in both circle and rectangle. And I'm going to add these drops here. I'm going to use three different colors. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of pounce them on top to create almost like a stone effect. It's called polished stone effect. So how cool is that? So it creates a really neat effect in the background. Really, really cool. And I'm going to add a little bit of the blending solution so it reactivates it and it creates a very cool effect so this is not a new technique but i really like how the effect comes out so let me show you and you can do this obviously with the pearls or with alcohol inks i just love the shininess of the pearls so i just wanted to show you how it will look with it as well for the next technique i want to use also the felt tip i'm going to replace it with another one and let's see i'm going to kind of do a swiping technique so i'm going to use some green some yellow and maybe some of this other color tan color i don't know i'm not sure what color that is now i'm going to go and Swipe across. And that will create a really nice striped background, but will be pearlized. So I like that as well. And you could, for example, use some blending solution and just create neat effects in the background. You could also obviously go with other more uh, ink and just create other things so the swiping is one and then you can obviously add any of the you can do any of the other techniques on top as well so swiping makes it like different but i like it when it goes like this when it's more circular circular so going back to this one which has dried up again it looks like a stone effect you can go ahead and add more. You can go back and forth with the colors. So adding layers really helps bring it all together. 
So you could do it like this, the swiping, or you could just basically cover the whole background with something. It's up to you. I mean, there's so many different things you can do with it. Another technique is using a spritzer. So I'm going to create another background and I want to see the difference between spritzing it when something is wet as opposed to when something is dry. So I'm going to test it on both the wet background and also another one of the backgrounds that I have already made that already dried up here on the side. So let's see what happens when I spritz it on top of this wet background. And what I put is I put alcohol blending solution in here. You could also put alcohol spray so you kind of get like a very cool splatter effect i really like that now let's see i'm going to do the same thing but with this dry one and see what happens let it react so this one just created like those same movements of splatters that I did. But in this one, it's actually reacting again and creating like these bubbles. We'll see what happens once it dries. Let me heat set it to see. So that's really cool. Look at the amazing background that it created. So by spraying this on top, it created these like little splatters that I can I heat set and then it created holes in it so it's really nice very very nice so I really like this effect and I'm going to put this aside so I can show you another technique I just want to show you before I start the new technique for the one that I added the splatters, you can really see the splatters. It almost looks like a galaxy effect. So I find it very cool that those splatters from the little mini mister that comes inside the alcohol ink kit, it makes such beautiful designs. And that kit comes with these brushes, which is part of my next technique and using the alcohol ink palette. So I'm going to put a little bit of alcohol ink here in my palette, that's the purple. And what I find really cool with the alcohol inks, which I see Sharon A.K. Harris do so well, she paints beautiful, beautifully with these alcohol inks. Now, I haven't gotten all the new alcohol ink cardstock yet, so I'm basically just working on Yupo paper, but all these techniques can be done on all the alcohol ink cardstock, like the glittery one and the shiny one. I just haven't received it in the mail yet. So you could basically paint with this as well. You could manipulate things. So for example, I could put some of the alcohol ink solution here and manipulate the alcohol ink. Now I'm not the best at drawing and painting, but I find that it is a really fun to do when you know what you're doing. So I want to add a little bit of solution here because I'm finding this too dry. And I wonder, you know, it's, see, it's painting is so not for me. I am more of a background girl, so I'm going to see how it is to manipulate it differently, like by, by actually painting and using the backgrounds, but manipulating it differently. So creating more like a background effect. So let's see. Not as amazing as I would have liked it to be. If you really want to see beautiful painting, then you must watch how Sharon does that. I have a video on my YouTube channel of a, a demo on her on the Ranger booth. So go watch the alcohol ink demo. It really makes a difference to watch her 
manipulate alcohol things. She is like really good. I am just average. So yeah, so you see, you can actually add, I can really manipulate it easier. So yes, you know what? Truthfully, this actually works well when I can add it carefully. So I can make my own designs. You know how I wanted the circles to be before? So this is working well. To create my backgrounds the way I like them with the circles, I could re easily use these type of manipulations with a paintbrush. So, I mean, this is pretty cool because you can really manipulate this well, but I think I don't have enough. It's like drying too quickly. Okay, there we go. Let's see for now. And obviously you can paint as well, but the painting doesn't look as nice. As you know, I want, you can also probably splatter. Let's see. Oh, there we go. That's a good fun thing that I could do. So let's go back to this one over here. Let's create a little bit of a galaxy effect on here. So let's bring this one back. Wow, it looks really nice. So there is another technique that I just thought of. It's not like a new technique, but you know how much I love splatters. So this is very cool. So let's see. Um, what else do I want to add? Let's add some more splatters in a different color to this one. Maybe some purple splatters. And the nice thing about this palette is that you can close it afterward and it'll remain there. And then every time you want to, you can activate the alcohol ink by adding a little bit of alcohol solution. That is very cool. I actually love this background. I almost want to add this to everything. This looks really, really neat. Let's add a little bit of the yellow. Let's see how it looks. Oh, that's beautiful. I'm loving this background. Why didn't I think of splattering before? I don't know. Sometimes I wonder myself what happens why I don't think thoroughly with this. These are stunning backgrounds. And let's add a little bit of yellow here to cover everything that is left. Wow. I am loving this background the most. So funny. You never know what you're going to get. Sometimes you think, oh, you're going to do something, and then you end up doing something completely different and even more beautiful. So I want to recreate this background maybe on something else. I can't wait to do that. The last technique that I wanted to show you is using foil paper on top of the tacky areas of the alcohol ink backgrounds. So what I'm going to do is I picked a couple that already had some wet areas. And all you have to do is just kind of place it on top and by rubbing, by rubbing it on top, it will like attach itself to the gold parts. So except for these lines that I made a mistake on, don't press too hard and it will just attach to the golden area. So for example, you can see here that it will do that. Now here, for example, there's a lot of tackier areas, so it will really attach itself beautifully to it. Look how beautiful that is. So it's a really beautiful technique that you can do, and it adds such beautiful things to the background. So anything that stayed tacky will work as well. So how pretty is that? So you could use... You could definitely use the mixatives from the alcohol links, but I find the foil paper gives it such a beautiful back, like effect. And you don't have to do much. You don't really have to press really hard like I did in the first one, and it will work beautifully. Like you can basically put any foil color that you want, so anything goes for this, but look how pretty it looks. 
So I'm really excited with all the different backgrounds that came out on this Yupo paper. I love every single one of them. This one more like a galaxy and the splatters and the foil. I mean, basically everything turned out so nice. And I just want to show you how you can put this in the disc bound journal and make it into a journal. So all you have to do is just basically click all the discs into the pages and you can obviously finish these by stamping and by adding some sentiments. So you can do anything you want with these. They don't have to stay like this. But I just I'm gonna put them in the disc bound journal first and create it just so I can show you what I mean. And then you can flip the pages. Now Joggles makes these with watercolor paper, but I think it was a brilliant idea to cut these out of Yupu paper. So that way you can create alcohol ink effects. So then all you do is just flip the page and you have the different backgrounds that you created. Now I might finish this at a later date by putting, as I said, little sentiments on it or a focal point, but I like keeping this. I might even write in the back what I did in each one. That way I can have it as a point of reference. Next time I want to create something like this, which I'm really excited about, I'm going to know to just refer to this little mini album. So I hope you enjoyed my video today and all these fun techniques that are not particularly mine per se but are just fun to do and I just wanted to put them all in one video so that way you can always refer to this one. If you like my video please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends on social media and for more inspiration subscribe to my channel and visit me on my website. Thank you so much and have an amazing day. Bye!